Hey guys, welcome back. Last time we were able to run our local development server and we can go to localhost port 8000 and we have our Django application being served. So in this video, I want us to take a look at the core files that Django ships with and basically explore around before we start adding our own functionality. So the manage.py basically is used to hook in the commands we type in here and then it sends them to Django and then Django can execute them. All right, so we are going to be running other types of commands. For example, here, if you come down here, you will see that whenever we run run server, we get this text here that says we have some unapplied migrations. So these are required to set up Django's core functionality with our database. So we can go ahead and set them up. So here, we need to run a, migra a migrate command. So since these migrations are already prepared, we need to migrate them. So we migrate them by running python manage.py migrate. Okay, and you see it's gonna log out that it, it applied this and everything is okay. So whenever we run manage.py and then add a subcommand, that is gonna be sent here. And now this is now sent to Django and Django executes it. All right, let's bring back our server. So on here, we have some other files. So we have the main project folder created. So in here we have this dander init file. So don't worry about this one. This is just to make sure that this folder is looked at as a module and we can import things from it. So here, this is this asgi.py file. This is a new file that was recently introduced in Django. So what this does is it allows you to run some parts of Django as asynchronous. So by default, Django is a synchronous framework, meaning we basically make requests to the web server, the server processes them, and then it gets back to us. But if you look at the common use cases of a web application, some of the times we might not need to use that model. So if we wanted to implement things like real-time chat, things like socket, that is when we can use this asgi.py to set up a way that this application can talk to clients in an asynchronous way. So moving forward, we have the settings.py. So this is like the manifest file of your application. So down here, you will see that Django has a secret key. Now this secret key is pretty important. It is used when doing things like hashing passwords, things like compressing files and all that other stuff. So we need a way of keeping this secret key secure. So whenever we do things like pushing this code to GitHub, we don't really want to expose this. So here you see we even have a warning that keep this security key secure keep this secret key in your production secret. So I always advise that even when you're in development, always move this key away. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this key and remove it from here and create a .env file on the root, so .env. So when we create a .env file, we can put it here. Okay, so when we create a .env file, it allows us to basically put this information here and then we can hide away this .m file from version control. So I'm also going to create a .git ignore file. So .git ignore. And in here, I'm going to put .env. Like this. Save. And this .m file is going to be now hidden from version control. Every time we run a git command, we will not be able to basically add it. So also, I want to also here add the environment files. We don't want to be pushing these to GitHub. So right there, fenf, can put a slash and maybe put this and save. So right now we don't have a git project initialized, but we'll be doing that later. So now when you come back to our settings.py, to keep this one really secure, we don't want to add it in the code. So you can access this. So you can access the things you put in an environment, in the environment variables using the OS module. So here you can do os.envire.get, then the key. So we need to import os. So here we can say import os, like this. So when we run this, you will see that the server stops telling us that the secret key must not be empty. That is because that that is because by default our server doesn't know that we updated our environment file. So we need a way to restart this server when we tell it that the environments were updated. So here we can we need to first do source.env. So we see that we get this kind of error saying that there is a syntax error in our .env file. And that's because our secret key basically has all these characters and we need to really add it as a string. So 
So I'm going to wrap all this in this string format and save. And then down here, I will source it, in, source it in again. And now you see it works. And now we run back our server. And you see that the server is back up. So if you go here, you see that things are still working. So make sure you, you run source.env and also make sure you're using git bash if you're on Windows. So coming back here, now down here, you see that we have debug equals true. So this tells Django which kind of environment you are running in so that you can know how to handle specific things. For example, when we are in development, so when debug is true, it's going to be giving us very descriptive errors. If we have like 404 errors, it's gonna throw them to us. But if we are in production, Django will use this value to know, to render different things to the user. So whenever, let's say there are some errors in our application, Django doesn't just throw them to, throw the errors to the user. So it can maybe tell them a handy message like something is not good. So here we have the allowed host section. So this one here, basically you can define which domains your application is going to be served on. All right, so moving on down here, we have the installed app section. So by default, Django ships with these five, these six apps. We have the admin, the auth, content types, sessions, messages, and static files. And we'll be looking at most of these as we go. So here, the middleware. So this basically is some extra functionality that supports these built-in Django apps. And you see that these are arrays, meaning it, they provide a way of us adding more here. So when it comes to apps, of course, when we create our own apps, which we'll talk about like next time, we'll be also be adding them to this file. So we have the root URL conf. So, so this defines the entry point to the routing of our application. So apparently our routing starts from urls.py here, which we are going to get here too. So we need to define that file where our main URLs are. So here we have the templates. So the templates are basically the, you can think of them as the HTML pages for now. Login HTML, register HTML, those can be templates. So we need a way for Django to know how to work with those. Now, of course they have a, a, an initial setup, but we need to tell it where those files will be. So we'll be adding those here. So we have the WSG application. So this is the entry point to basically our web server application. So which is now WSGI.py. So like I said, we have SGI and WSGI and WSGI is a way to serve our application as synchronous and SGI, it helps us to serve it as asynchronous. And we'll be talking more about this as we go. So right now let's just focus on what is here. So down here we have where we define our databases. So when you set up Django, it shifts with the default SQLite database. So this is good for development, so we'll develop on this, and then later we'll be changing it when we are going to deploy to Heroku to Postgres. Here we have things that help us to validate passwords. So we have the language code, uh, so we can, so every time we change this language code, Django will update a whole things on the website using a new language code we set. There is a little more to setting up different languages on a site that by default, the value on the language code will be the language that the site will be on. So here you have the time zone. By default, it's gonna be UTC. Then we have we we also have these other settings. So so that helps when Django is having an application to different locales or different people. It can know how to basically serve them depending on where they are and maybe the language they use. So here we have the URLs.py. So like we said, this is an entry file to our Django project. So everything we write all the functionalities we write, we need to expose that to the user, to the outside environment. So whenever a user makes a request to our server, we need to basically specify the routes that they can access here. So by default, we can access the admin. So right now you see we have slash admin, then we have this. So if we came over here in our, in our browser and go to slash admin, you see that we access the Django administration page. Also, if we change this to maybe app slash admin, then we need to now come over here and access this from app slash admin. And you see things are still working. So this helps us to define where this guy, our functionality will be living and expose that to the user or the outside request. So we've talked a little bit about WSGI. So WSGI is a specification and all these Python frameworks implemented. So we don't have to do much here. This is just for Django to tell where your application is and how it should run. So this is a virtual environment file. Don't worry about it. 
this is the database file that gets set up we looked at the manage UI. so those are the files that Django ships with by default so before we go I'm going to stop this server and initialize a git project here so I'll do git init and I will so when you say git init you see that this is hidden but this is not so we can go back to our, our dot git ignore and do this so down here let's do this so down here if we save you see that this is also hidden from git okay so looking good so every time we create a .env file it's going to be important that we expose what we have in our .env whenever we push this to github so if someone wants to check out our project they can know what kind of environments they need to set up so it's always good we set up a .env sample file and then in the .env sample file we can keep the keys but hide the basically the values so you can say maybe put your key here all right so looking good so i'm going to be pausing the video here so in the next video i'm going to come and we start creating apps